look at frequency modulation and uh, we'll start from scratch again uh, with the basic principles. So with frequency modulation we again need a modulator and a carrier and uh, this time though we are looking to uh, modulate frequency obviously. Um, so <coughs> let's start with the carrier which is there um, and since the way of controlling the frequency actually we'll, we'll start off with the whole thing again so just bear with me and easy deck Since the cycle object, um, although controlling the frequency of the cycle object, we need to send something to its left-hand inlet. Um, once again, if we're using a cycle object to control that, we might essentially want to do something along these lines. So here we have the uh, carrier, which is what's going to give us our main frequency. And then <coughs> our modulator up here, which is going to give us our, um, is going to control the frequency of that, oops, oh dear, um, of that modulator, yes, that's right. Um, but obviously looking at that, um, uh, remembering that cycle outputs a value from um, minus 1 to 1. Um, this oscillator is simply going to change the frequency of the carrier oscillator from between minus 1 hertz and plus 1 hertz. So you're not really going to get much of a result. You will get a result actually, you will get something sounding if you were to send this, if you were going to control the... Um, if we uh, increase the, the speed of, or the frequency of the modulator, I think, will we? No, we don't get much at all. No. I can hear something going on there anyway. Um, but it's certainly not what we want. Um, what we want really is to have a, a centre frequency for our carrier and to oscillate around that central frequency um, using our modulation frequency. Um, so I hope I'm not sure that I, um, I'm not sure how much of what I've said so far is going to have made sense. But um, what we will do in this case then uh, is to get rid of this from it, and in order to yield our central frequency around which we can oscillate, um, we will do this, which seems like a slightly odd thing to do. But um, bear with me for a minute. Actually, sorry, I need to do that. Okay, so now we are um, we have a central frequency of four forty because if you remember, the uh, any object that has a um, a tilde after it is sending data all the time. So this is constantly sending a value of four hundred forty to the cycle object which is therefore oscillating at 440 hertz. So that's all right. Um, and if now I were to connect this cycle object to the, the addition here, then uh, hang on, I need to change this back to say one hertz. Then we will oscillate around that um, frequency, you can just about hear it. So what's happening here, if we uh, make a uh, number, signal number box, and make that um, oscillate at 20 hertz, connect that to here, we will see, as we would expect, this cycle, uh, cycle object is oscillating between 1 and minus 1. You don't actually see it reach 1 because it's going too fast. Um, but then if we were to connect a number box to 
the output of the plus object with 440 hertz, that 1 to minus 1 is being added to uh, 440. So when it's at minus 1, minus 1 plus 440 is going to be 439 hertz, um, and uh, plus 1 plus 440 hertz is going to be 441 hertz. So we are now controlling this cycle um, object um, with, with the modulator through a sort of uh, central um, uh, pitch uh, to give us um, frequency modulation uh, around the 440 hertz uh, area. So, and of course we can then change the central frequency by sending something into the right hand side of this object. So we'll send this um, uh, a value of, uh, say, well, I'll start with 440 and then of course I can drag up or down. It's very hard to hear though. Okay, we, we do detect a very subtle change in frequency, but it is very, very subtle. So what we might want to do is to increase the depth of that oscillation so that it goes between, say, instead of going between between, uh, sorry, between the values of 439 and 441, we might want to go between the values of, a, a, I don't know, 430 and 450, so it would be 10 hertz in either direction. In this instance, we need to change the value that's coming, well, somewhere between this object and this object, we need to change the value from uh, something of minus 1 to plus 1 to minus 10 to plus 10. And of course what we need to do that is a multiplication object because we need to multiply that value. We are increasing essentially its amplitude. So this is where things tend to confuse people a bit because of course the multiplication object so far we have been using to dictate amplitude. We are using it for the same purpose here but it's still controlling the frequency, so it's still controlling frequency modulation. Um, so multiply there, run that cycle object through the multiplication object and into here. And then if I send a value to there, we don't hear anything at the moment because it's being multiplied because this value of minus 1 to 1 is being multiplied by 0 actually. I'll just add one more num uh, signal number box just so we can see what's going on. So that's not changing at all. But of course when I increase this value here we're now multiplying m 1 to minus 1 by well now about 1. Um, but now of course I can increase that value to 10 as I said before and now you hear it oscillating to a much greater extent. Okay, so um, cycle object multiply, uh, gives us a value of 1 to minus 1. It is multiplied by 10, each everything that's coming out of there, so we get values from minus 10 to plus 10. It's oscillating between minus 10 and plus 10. And that goes into um, our central frequency uh, addition box. So at the moment it's 460 hertz, so we're going between... 450 and 470 hertz, you can't quite see it get to 470 again because it's going too fast. And that is dictating the oscillation of the carrier. Um, so there you are. I mean, that, that's essentially um, our main engine for this. And then we can add similar bells and whistles, which we will do in a minute, um, to uh, get it to be controlled by um, a keyboard.